Namaste and welcome to this level one living yoga full practice video consisting of the double breathing process for the oxygenation and energization of your cells followed by the 25 living yoga postures for the cultivation of a strong and flexible body mind and finally the rebirthing process to balance your energies and focus your mind at the end of your session. Of course, in living yoga, all of these practices are underpinned and supported by a life positive and universal philosophy that's encapsulated in the four principles of living yoga. So as dedicated practitioners of yoga, we recognize there are six keys to success on the path. Let's intone them in Sanskrit together. Away we go. Virya, Titiksha, Viveka, Shraddha, Parakrama, Sangha. We're now ready for our complete double breathing process to energize our cells and still our minds. So you can now take a comfortable posture, seated or reclined. Ready now for stage one of double breathing, 10 times in the abdomen, away we go. Final breath. Now taking a slow, deep Ujjayi inhale, filling yourself to the brim. Hold your breath for a couple of seconds. And now take an R ah breath exhale, progressively softening the body, feeling the crossover from breath into breathlessness. Turn your mind inside and experience dynamic stillness. Now in stage two of double breathing, the breath moves from the abdomen to the chest. 10 breaths, Away we go. Final breath. Now taking a slow, deep Ujjayi inhale, filling yourself to the brim. Hold your breath for a couple of seconds. And now take an R breath exhale, progressively softening the body, feeling the crossover from breath into breathlessness. Turn your mind inside and experience dynamic stillness. In stage three of double breathing, we breathe entirely in the chest, 10 times, away we go. Final breath. Now 
taking a slow, deep Ujjayi inhale, filling yourself to the brim. Hold your breath for a couple of seconds. And now take an ah breath exhale, progressively softening the body, feeling the crossover from breath into breathlessness. Turn your mind inside and experience dynamic stillness. Stage four of double breathing combines all the three previous stages together into one 30 breath breathing exercise. This is a powerful practice, so be sure to pace yourself and practice your breathing at the right intensity for you. We start with the 10 breaths in the abdomen. I will call the switches. Away we go. Switch. Switch. Final breath. Taking a slow, deep Ujjayi inhale, filling yourself to the brim. Hold your breath for a couple of seconds. And now take an ah breath exhale, progressively softening the body, feeling the crossover from breath into breathlessness. Turn your mind inside and connect to dynamic stillness for one minute. Be in your body. Feel your energy. And don't breathe until you have to. One minute of dynamic stillness is now complete. You can take an Ujjayi inhale, filling the body to the brim and holding the breath in for 12 empowering seconds. It's an R breath exhale, releasing through the body and returning to stillness. Your practice of double breathing is now complete and you are fully empowered to move through into your asana practice. So you can slowly raise yourself up into a standing posture. This week eight full home practice video contains the complete level one living yoga practice. 
including all seven of the asana kriyas that you've learned during the course. We begin in Tadasana, the mountain pose, ready to enter the Tadha Kriya, the mountain flow. You can now take an Ujjayi inhale, breathing life into the body, and an Ujjayi exhale, breathing the body out into life. When you hear the wood block, that's your cue to begin with Udvatadasana, the flying mountain. Connect yourself up to the pulse action of the pose, releasing the stretch through the exhale, increasing the stretch through the inhale. Maintaining an underlying ease, sukha, so that we can connect to the pulse of the breath, spanda, using the pulse of the breath to stretch our boundaries and play our edges, leela, so that we can find the perfect expression of ourselves in the posture, Purna. We're going to come into a final inhale now in Uddhva Tadasana. It's a swan dive into Uttanasana, the standing forward bend. Immediately picking up on the pulse action, inhaling to bend the knees, hinge the hips, lengthen the spine, and then the exhale to dive over the thighs into the surrender of the back. Trusting in the method of the practice. Staying connected to the pulse of the breath. Playing our edges skillfully. And remembering that perfection is found by giving just the right amount of stretch at the right time so that the body can absorb and receive it. We have a final pulse action here. Ready to vinyasa through to prapadasana, the toe balance. If you feel ready, you can exhale your hands into Anjali Mudra and then picking up on the pulse. The inhale comes up through the body, lengthening the abdomen, opening the chest, and the exhale travels down through the body, rooting you through the balls of the feet. Pulse action here is subtle, but perceivable. steady gaze and a steady Ujjayi breath. This next inhale will be our last one in Prapadasana and we'll be taking a Vinyasa back to Tadasana. So the exhale into Uttanasana, the inhale flies up into Uddhva Tadasana and the exhale returns us to Tadasana ready to link up with the Surya Kriya Sun Salutation. Inhaling to fly up into Uddhva Tadasana. Exhaling, swan diving, Uttanasana. Ready for the step back, inhaling, Eka Padasana. The sweep, exhaling, Ardha Mukha Svanasana. Now harnessing the inhale to hover forward into Palakasana to offer the eight points to the ground with the exhale, Ashtangasana. Short scoop with the inhale into Bhujangasana. To sweep back on the exhale, Ardha Mukha Svanasana. This gives us some momentum with the inhale to step the right foot forward, Ekapadasana. And to bow, Uttanasana. 
inhale to fly up. Udvatadasana. And the exhale to return to the mighty Tadasana. Ready for the left side of the body. Inhaling. Udvatadasana. Exhaling. Uttanasana. Inhaling. Eka Padasana. Exhaling to Ardo Mukha Svanasana. Inhaling to Palakasana. Exhaling Ashtangasana. Inhaling to Bhujangasana. Exhaling Ardo Mukha Svanasana. Inhaling, Ekapadasana. Exhaling, to Uttanasana. Inhaling, Udvatadasana. And the exhale to return to Tadasana. Ready to link into the Chandra Kriya, the moon flow. With an inhale to circle the hands onto the hips. And the exhale to step the feet square and hip width apart. Drop a bend into your knees so we can syringe the inhale through the length of the body into the spread of the left fingers and then the exhale to lean over into Ardha Chandrasana one and a half moon side stretch. Now connecting with the pulse action using each inhale to lift and each exhale to surrender into the half moon. With the in-breath, draw energy into the legs, create lift out of the waist, length into the left arm. So the exhale takes us into a true and deep half moon side stretch. We have a final pulse here with this exhale. And then we're ready to vinyasa to the other side. So it's a windmill of the arms as we inhale. And then we're ready for Ardha Chandrasana 1 with the exhale. So the challenge here of course is to make the wood block on the inhale. This requires us to draw the Ujjayi breath from a deep internal place unaffected by the intensity of the asana. Take a final pulse here in half moon. So making a final offering on the exhale into Purna. And then we'll take a vinyasa to Ardha Chandrasana 2, the back bend. So lifting to center with the inhale. Exhaling to bring the hands onto the lower back, bending into the knees. So we can now draw the inhale up from the earth, through the legs, into the fullness of the chest. Ready to tip the hips forward as we lean back into Ardha Chandrasana to the back bend. Now connecting with the pulse action, lifting out of the posture as we breathe in, creating new space in the lower back, and then the exhale to surrender back into the curve. Maintaining our inner composure as we use the exhalation to nudge our edges. Always giving the body only that which it can handle. Here's our final exhale into the back bend. Okay, now the vinyasa. So the lift on the inhale. And the exhale to bow forward into Padang Ustasana, the forward bend with the toe grip. Immediately connecting with the pulse action, bending the knees, hinging the hips, lifting the heart. And then the exhale to use the leverage on the toes to draw ourselves into the bow. Keeping the shoulders broad. Working the edges skillfully.
final pulse here. Before we switch into the second variation with interlaced fingers. So it's an inhale to make that vinyasa. Okay, now keeping control of the ujjayi breath. Being progressive in our approach to the posture. In this way, we can stretch out our bliss. So we're not giving it all away on the first breath. Each pulse has something new to bring to the posture and to the body. Here comes our final exhale now. And then our vinyasa to bring us back to Tadasana. Sweeping the arms forward and up on the inhale. And an exhale to return to Tadasana, the mountain pose. Ready to link into the Virabhadra Kriya, the warrior flow. It's an inhale to turn side onto the mat. An exhale to drop springboards into the legs. So that we can inhale to step the feet wide apart into the warrior stance. The exhale will turn the feet to the right, the left hand will come to hip, and we're now ready to reach out into the inhale, extending through the right arm, hinging the right hip, and the exhale to land our triangle comfortably. Now for the three building breaths. First inhale, to firm into the legs. Exhale then softens the legs and grounds through the feet. Ready for the second inhale to draw up through the legs, open the chest, rolling the left shoulder back and the exhale again softens the body, sending the energy back to the feet. Third inhale draws energy to legs, opens the chest and sends the left arm skyward gazing to the thumb. Now we have three pulses to fulfill our Utita Trikonasana. Each exhalation softens the body, releases tension, so that the next inhale can expand and open the body all the way out to the peripheries of the fingers and toes. We have one more pulse here now in Utita Trikonasana. You take this final exhale, bend into your front knee a little, ground down, and then use that to inhale to come up to center. And the exhale to turn the feet to the left, bringing right hand to right hip. Ready to reach out, inhaling, hinging the left hip, and the exhale to land your triangle on the good side of the edge. Ready for your three building breaths. First inhale, to firm and strengthen the legs. Exhale, then gives way, softening the legs, grounding the feet. Second inhale, comes up through the legs, opens the chest and rolls the right shoulder back. The exhale again softens. And this will allow you to take a third inhale into the legs, opening the chest and sending the right arm skyward. Now connecting with the three pulses to fulfill your Utita Trikonasana. Expanding and opening into the inhales, releasing and surrendering through the exhales. As you get comfortable, you can use your exhalation to slide your left hand a little lower down your leading leg. Here's our final pulse now. To fulfill our triangle pose, use the exhale to soften the front leg, ground through the feet, ready to sweep up to center with the inhale, We're ready to link to bowing triangle. Square the feet and use your exhale to bring your hands to your lower back as you bend your knees. Ready to syringe the inhalation up through the legs, fill out the chest, back bend if you wish, and the exhale to bow into Prasarita Padottanasana. 
Now connecting up with the pole section, bending the knees on the inhale, hinging the hips, lifting the heart, and then using the exhale to offer yourself into the back. Working patiently, free from force, using the pulse method to open the posture up. So we're now coming into our final pulse here. In Prasarita Padottanasana, the bowing triangle. Exhaling into the bow, ready to transition to warrior two. So it's an inhale to launch up, raising the arms above the head, and the exhale to turn the feet to the right as you lunge into the right leg. Okay, now pulse action. Draw back, up and in as you breathe in and then use the exhale to slowly sink into the lunge and warrior two. Keep the back leg strong and straight, the spine vertical, and on the end of the exhale, just ensure that your arms are parallel to the ground. We have a final pulse now in warrior two. Ready to transition to the other side. It's an inhale to come to center, arms raise. Feet now turn to the left and the exhale sinks into left leg lunge. Pole section, straining into the front leg as much as you need as you breathe in. And then the exhale takes you into the lunge. I have a feeling that the whole body is pulsing, receiving the inhale and releasing through the exhale. We have one more pulse. We're now ready to complete our Virabhadra Kriya. It's an inhale to lift to center, arms raising, and an exhale to make the step back to Tadasana. Ready to link in to the Tandav Kriya, the balancing flow. Turning with the inhale to the head of the mat and using the exhale to bend into the knees. To step the right foot back with the inhale, bringing energy up through the shaft of the body, making the body strong. And the exhale takes us into Virabhadrasana 3, the flying warrior. Now picking up the pulse, using the inhale to lift the heart, withdraw, pull energy into your limbs, and the exhale to move towards the T-shape. It's all about the breath. Last exhale, and now the vinyasa, back to Tadasana. Traveling through Flying Mountain to return. Bending into the knees as you come. Stepping the left toes back with the inhale. Bringing energy up through the body, strong and firm. And the exhale into Virabhadrasana 3. This first inhale is the key breath. As we draw new energy into the body. Firming the back leg. And the exhale to bring us to the T-shape. Final pulse. Ready for a vinyasa. Back to Tadasana. Again bending the knees to unload any tension as we link into Garudasana, the eagle pose. Inhaling to raise the arms and exhaling to come into eagle arms, right arm under left, bending into the knees. 
Now for eagle legs, inhaling the right leg slowly up and then exhaling to wrap and entwine the legs around each other. Okay, now the pulse action. Each inhale creates a lift through the body. Each exhale allows a slow squeeze down into the joints. Take it one breath at a time. Inhaling to lift. Exhaling to squeeze. Activating our willpower now for a final pulse. And the vinyasa to the other side. Inhaling to Udvatadasana. And exhaling to eagle arms. This time the left arm under the right. Ready for the eagle legs. Left leg lifting and the exhale to wrap. Seal the body in, sink it down, and now pick up the pulse action, allowing the body to lift into the inhale, allowing the body to sink down into the joints on the exhale. Exhale, and now unleashing the body into Udva Tadasana on the inhale, as we vinyasa our way back to Tadasana on the exhale, for the third and final balancing pose of Vrikshasana, the tree. Right leg lifts with the inhale, plant it into the inner left leg, and the exhale seals the posture with Anjali Mudra. Now the pulse action, each inhale is a lift of energy up through the body, the exhale is a downward flow of energy into the roots of the foot. As you breathe in, let your right hip open, chest expand and spine grow. As you exhale, deepen into your balance. Vinyasana, to return to Tadasana for the left side of Rikshasana. Inhaling left foot lifts and the exhale into Anjali Mudra. Now with each inhale, the sap rises up through the body and with each exhale, the roots deepen into the earth. Keeping a steady gaze is always an aid to balancing. for a final exhale here in our tree pose to complete our Tandav Kriya. It'll be an inhale into Flying Mountain. The exhale will then return us to Mountain Pose ready to use the Suya Kriya to link in to our new group of postures of Swan Flow. Inhaling into Flying Mountain. Exhale to Swan Dive into Uttanasana, Standing Forward Bend. We now use a spinal extension with the inhale, bending the knees, hinging the hips, looking forward. And the exhale steps back into downward facing dog. We now continue with the Suya Kriya, inhaling into Palakasana, the plank pose. Exhaling to lower down into the eight points, Ashtangasana. 
Inhaling to scoop up into Bhujangasana, the cobra. And then exhale to sweep back into downward facing dog, ready to link into Hamsasana, the swan. So it's an inhale that brings the right knee forward to the right thumb, hooking the right heel underneath the left hip bone, and an exhale to bed down into the hips. Ready for the rebound as the inhale lifts the spine, opens the chest, so the exhale can take us forward into bowing swan, maintaining length through the spine. Now the pole section. The inhale charges the back leg, grounds the front knee, lengthens the spine, and the exhale drops body weight patiently down into the hip. Stay close to the pulse of the breath. As you patiently work openings into your hips. Offering a final pulse of breath now into the bowing swan. Ready to link into the second variation of this pose, the flying swan. So it's an inhale to ground down through your legs to lift the spine up. So now connecting to the pulse action, using each exhale to release the spine, grounding into the legs, so that the inhale can rebound the body up, lifting and arcing the spine back. So now have fun with it, playfully using each inhale to progressively climb up into your flying swan. Coming into the last pulse now to bring your flying swan to fulfillment. And it's an exhale to sweep back into downward facing dog. We will take a full cycle of breath, inhaling and exhaling. Ready for the left side of Hamsasana now. So the inhale brings the left knee to the left thumb hooking the left heel under the right hip and the exhale beds down into the hips. Ready for the rebound, inhaling to lift the spine and the exhale to dive forward into bowing swan, ready to connect to the pulse action. So the inhale brings charge into the back leg, grounds the front knee, reaches out through the spine. So the exhale can surrender the body weight down into the hip. Work patiently with your breathing, using each exhale to activate your let go muscle to open the hip. To our final pulse of breath now in the bowing swan. Ready to use the inhale to rebound the body up. So grounding through the legs to make the lift. Using the exhale to release the spine. Ground down once more. And then enjoy working with your inhales. progressively lift and arc the spine back. Coming into a final pulse now to bring your flying swan to its fulfillment. And it'll be an exhale to sweep back into downward dog for a full cycle of breath. We're now preparing ourselves for Supta Virasana, the reclining hero's pose. So it'll be an inhale to come forward into a kneeling posture at the head of your mat, knees together, feet apart, and an exhale to lower the sit bones down to the floor or onto cushions. Now the pulse action. Each inhale sucks the thighs together, lifting the heart, and the exhale softens the inner body 
grounding down through the sit bones. Continue in this way. Now if you have your sukha in this base posture, you can begin to slowly recline back. But remember, keep your knees grounded and together and use your exhale to deepen into the stretch. It's possible to lower back onto hands, elbows or even shoulders. But most important is to have your own true and authentic journey here. This posture can have a lot of edge so play it well for yourself. It's all about finding our right place in the posture and connecting to the breath. Coming into a final pulse now in Supta Virasana. So if you've reclined all the way back with your arms over your head, this is the exhale to bring them back, ready to link into the Maha Kaliya Kriya. It's an inhale to launch up to center, lifting the hips, crossing the ankles, and an exhale to roll over, extending the legs out in front of the body, ready for Paschimottanasana. Inhaling to raise the arms, Exhaling to dive forward into your seated forward bend. Bend your knees all you need to to comfortably bind your big toes. Now the pulse action. Inhaling to hinge the hips, lift the heart, lengthen the spine, and the exhale to offer a slow bow. Remain connected to your sukha, your inner ease. As you focus on the pulse of your breath, your spander. Skillfully and intelligently playing your edges, Leela. To find the perfection of the stretch on each breath, Purna. Work patiently but persistently here in Paschimottanasana. And remember the nature of the posture is to draw us into ourselves, it's introverting. So it's natural to close your eyes, focus on your breath and turn your awareness inside yourself. Offering this final pulse of breath now in your seated forward bend, ready to make a transition to our counter posture, Purvottanasana. So it's an inhale to raise the arms and then the exhale to find the base position for tabletop, bending the knees, feet hip width apart. The inhale launches the hips up and counter stretches the spine. Now the pulse action, each exhale dropping the hips a little and then using the inhale to press into the feet and the hands to suck the shoulder blades up and under to lift the hips. Setting ourselves up now for a final pulse in tabletop. Trying to make the wood block with the inhale. And then the exhale lowers us all the way back down as we prepare to transition to Bhujangasana the Cobra. Inhaling to roll forward into cross-legged lifting the hips, chest and gaze, and the exhale to step back into downward facing dog. We now use our inhale to come down onto hands and knees in dog tilt, hollowing the lower back, looking up, and the exhale to release back into balasana, the baby pose. We'll take one cycle of breath here. 
preparing ourselves for Bhujangasana the Cobra. So it'll be this inhale to slither forward into your Cobra, either coming onto your elbows or your hands. And now connecting to the breath and using these early pulses to really loosen up the lower back. Moving your hips around to facilitate this unlocking of the lower spine. All right, once you've done this initial work, then you can begin to connect more deeply to the pulse action. Using the inhale to engage the legs, ground the hands, to lift through the chest, rolling the heads of the shoulders back. And then the exhale to release the stretch, so quite naturally. Inhales to engage the back bend, opening through the chest, and then the exhale to soften the back bend and release the intensity. So you want to feel the pulse action as a wave of energy that flows from the tips of your toes on the inhale, through the legs, hips, up into the chest, all the way into the back bend. And then the exhale is a wave of release all the way back down to the toes. You can now set yourself up for a final pulse, bringing your cobra to Purna. And now a counter flow, exhaling to round the back into cat tilt, inhaling to dog tilt, and then finally resting back into Balasana, the baby pose where we'll take a full cycle of breath to renew our spines. Okay, now we're ready to transition to spinal twist. So it's an inhale to bring the left knee forward into swan and the exhale to swing your right leg around, hooking it on the outside of your left knee. The inhale then raises the left arm and the exhale wraps into our initial twist. Now connecting to the pulse action. Using each inhale to release the twist so that you can lift and lengthen your spine. And then the exhale to induce the twist as you turn and gaze over your right shoulder. So now really linking into your pulse, into your breathing. to release the twist so that we can lift the spine and then using a slow exhale to squeeze and wring out the tension from your spinal muscles. section now in Matsa Andrasana, the twist. So taking a final squeeze with this exhale, we're ready to switch sides. So it's an inhale to change the legs over, an exhale to collapse the body weight down so that we can rebound and inhale up, lifting into the right arm this time, left fingers behind to support, and then the exhale to wrap into the initial twist. Now connecting to the pulse action, inhaling to release some of the twist so you can fill your lungs and grow your spine and then the exhale to induce the twist slowly. So your right arm here is acting as a leverage through which to twist the spine. The back hand is a support to help your spine to stay upright. Naturally, it might take time here to really be able to sink both sitting bones down into the ground. 
And as ever, working patiently, working with what you've got to gain the most out of the postures. Coming into a final pulse now in your spinal twist. Ready to link into Vipariti Karani Mudra, the half shoulder stand. Inhaling into cross-legged at the head of your mat and exhaling to roll back into ball pose. Now your first challenge here is to connect to your breathing. Inhaling and exhaling. The second challenge is to find your foundation. Do this by drawing your shoulder blades under and your elbows in. Then release your hips into your hands. Expand through your chest. So you can now use the inhale to send your legs skyward. You are in Vipariti Karani Mudra, the half shoulder stand. Naturally, the posture, like most, takes a little time to get used to. The secret, as ever, is to connect to the rhythm of your breathing. adjustments that you need to in order to be comfortable in the pose whilst keeping your chin in line with your navel. Naturally it takes time to build stamina here at first so if at any time you need to roll out and then roll back in this is fine. Coming into a final inhale now, in your half shoulder stand, and then with the exhale, return to ball pose, bending your knees, so that we can roll up on the inhale into cross-legged, ready for Matsayasana, the fish pose. So with the exhale, rest back onto your elbows, supporting your lower back with your hands. The inhale, ground through the elbows, lifting the chest, so that the exhale can release the neck slowly back. Inhaling. And exhaling. The neck of course can be a tender place for a lot of us containing a lot of tensions. So as ever working patiently. Raising the neck and releasing it back where you need to. To a final pulse now in Matsayasana, the fish pose. Ready to come up for our final posture. So it's an inhale to launch back up and an exhale to come into the posture of your choice, either cross legged or kneeling. Now the inhale binds the hands behind the back, opening the chest, looking up. So the exhale can dive forward into Yoga Madrasana, the seal of union. Now the pole section, inhaling, lifting the heart, grounding down through the sit bones, and then the exhale to fold over the thighs, bringing the forehead towards or onto the floor. Taking the posture slowly, one breath at a time. Coming into a final pulse now, inhaling and exhaling. Ready now to complete our asana practice by inhaling, raising the arms forward, up and above the head and exhaling to bring the hands down to the heart in Anjali Mudra. We take one pulse of breath here, inhaling 
and exhaling, releasing into dynamic stillness and taking a deep bow to yourself on completion of your asana practice. So you can now lay yourself down in Shavasana for the Shava Kriya to absorb the benefits of your asana practice. We utilize the same two techniques in the Shava Kriya, double breathing followed by the 61 point body rotation in order to renew, restore and rejuvenate our body and mind at the end of our practice. Remember the double breathing is done in three stages, five breaths in the belly, five belly to chest and five in the chest. Away we go. Switch. And switch. Final breath. Taking an Ujjayi inhale, filling up to your brim, holding the breath for a couple of seconds, and now taking an R breath exhale, and releasing as much tension from your body as you can at this time. Coming through to dynamic stillness for the practice of the 61 point body rotation. Begin by bringing your attention to the third eye. Now shift attention to the pit of the throat. Now the right shoulder, right elbow, right wrist, right thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, little finger, right wrist, right elbow, right shoulder, pit of throat. Now feel your left shoulder, left elbow, left wrist, left thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, little finger, left wrist, left elbow, left shoulder, pit of throat, now feel your sternum, right chest, sternum, left chest, sternum, navel, pubic bone, feel your right hip, right knee, right ankle, right big toe, Second toe, third toe, fourth toe, little toe, right ankle, right knee, right hip, pubic bone. Now feel your left hip, left knee, left ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe little toe, left ankle, left knee, left hip, pubic bone, navel, sternum, pit of throat, third eye. Now feel your whole body, feel your whole body completely relaxed, whole body. Practice of the Shava Kriya is now complete, as is another living yoga home practice session. Congratulations on this. Keep up the inspirational work. Namaste.